Hello, welcome to another Java's Web Users Group Best of Ever episode and meetup number 21. My name is Peter Pilgrim, the Jug Leader. On Tuesday, the 5th of September 2006, at Skills Matters offices in Farringdon, London, Max and Tony presented a delightful piece on object oriented JavaScript and Ajax. This is a real privilege and a great honour, since Max is also a colleague and a fellow freelancer, a contractor at UBS Investment Bank in London. Enjoy this one, especially from me. Hi. Welcome everybody tonight, welcome to off number 21. Now I'm going to hand over to Max and Tony and you present object orientated AJAX for you. Enjoy. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, just uh, working together with the just how we in our opportunity to share a couple of uh,
second line, constructor is just reference back to its own constructor. You can skip that line, works in every browser. But um, the specification itself says that there has to be a constructor, so this is just the way of um, doing it properly. So. Um, might be sometimes useful if you like to do something like a back reference or email information and getting back uh, the construct from the current object. And then, just like I said, the super uh, keyword will exist, so you can do something like the static access uh, variable, which just points the code of the rates are, um, which allows you then to access um, the super stats in that way, which it doesn't read really very nice, unfortunately. It doesn't look like a super dog or whatever. Um, you especially have to use that core um, method on, on the function itself and provide with the, the reference to this object. Everybody familiar with that application? No? Not really? Um, functions are, are methods. Uh, well, functions are objects of the software in JavaScript. So um, the call method is a method on that jar, uh, function object. And um, so you can use any, any function put in this um, reference for which object you like to, to use it with. Kind of sounds strange, it's some reflective thing. Um, because JavaScript itself doesn't care if you directly call a function, it's just a function without any this um, reference unless you created an object. So that might feel strange. <laughs> you can put um, arguments for that function itself with a comma separate after this keyword which you have to provide. So you could in theory uh, call methods of other objects uh, with some, some very different this keyword, but I don't recommend that, it's getting quite confusing. <laughs> so, but basically you, you need to write it that way to, to get to the super implementation of, um, of your overload. Um, I, I would recommend it for everybody to fiddle around with that a bit, because it's um, quite an interesting part of Java. Not good and um, <coughs> clear or not? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, I didn't understand it the first time I came across it, so I don't know why do I have to pass in a reference section for the object? Yeah. So, in that case, you're just returning an iterator um, for the iterator method, put in this keyword, and there's actually a much simpler way of doing this um, with JavaScript. Um, you can <coughs> just extend the native array prototype. Um, they're not write protected in any way, so you can add even to the, the main object um, every method you like. Prototype, for instance, the framework has its name from that uh, keyword and um, uses uses that massively by extending the object stuff like yeah, for deriving um, classes from each of the building classes in a way that works much more the Java way. But underneath it's doing pretty much the same, just in a reflective way. So um, I recommend highly to 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 look at the extends or extend method or um, what it's called in, in, in prototype. Quite interesting how they do it. And um, it's it's easy to easy to extend this model there using um, for your own needs um, or basically every every framework uses some sort of technique, but they are all going back to basically that one. So um, so we're getting to the interesting part: component models. Um, you're building your scripts with some sort of library, maybe, or build everything from scratch. Doesn't matter, but um, this is quite, yeah, okay, you can model stuff in objects, but it's not really helping with this playing HTML on a web page in, in an object oriented way. It's quite, you know, it's just And 
Well, what I came across is that, that I always wanted to have something like a component model where I say, okay, the component um, might have children and stuff like that. And um, it might be <coughs> having a back reference or whatever. And um, so I always tend to develop models where I'm, I'm one JavaScript class in a way. Um, on component control, it's just a piece of HTML. So it displays that bit, it modifies it, controls um, event handlers in that one, makes a callback uh, methods in, in, in that component. So you're having something reusable. Like imagine uh, you're having uh, <coughs> a, a link which opens up a special pop up, whatever. Um, or the link of uh, displaying something in the target container can you reuse uh, the link everywhere in the, in the pages because it's always working the same way. Um, and then a component, just you, you want to build something in the way of a tree because HTML is pretty much a tree. Um, or XML um, in, in the case of when you're dealing with XML object uh, components. Um, and um, the, so the base of component always controls all the child components. Um, so if the, the base component gets deleted, all the child components get deleted. And if you render the, the main component, it renders all the underlying components. So you can plug them together to bigger reusable pieces. Big. Um, so I, I developed a very a small example which fits on the slide, <laughs> um, which uh, does something like that. Um, I, I will provide this code to everybody of you if you like. Uh, maybe we could put it on the web page um, of the Journal of London. Um, it's very simple, uh, <coughs> but it's um, pretty much of what I, what I was telling. So, Deep code actually means HTML, which is good as some HTML snippet we like to display. And um, as you can see, this good first method here render just puts it in the HTML. This is not the cleanest solution, but it's very short to write, so I um, decided to do it like that here. Uh, more complex models might split up um, an XML document to retrieve from the server and go from that or modify it. And it's um, in the DOM tree directly instead of using these techniques. But there are a lot of frameworks which are actually just using that one and I don't find as well. So, um, <coughs> how am I generating the code there? Um, it's done by replacing this regular expression and because of all the backslashes, the backslashes <laughs> for escaping. It looks a bit confusing, but what it does is just the dollar bracket keyword notation. Everybody knows that one from ads. And, um, and just replacing that one, um, making the bit inside of the, um, of the brackets being called with the get method, and that one looks in a reflective way. Do I have a property in this object with that key? Um, and if there is one check if it is an HTML component itself, if it is, it will just generate the whole from that one in return. And if it is a method or a function in that case, again, call that method with, uh, with this, this um, keyword. Um, so you can build just um, dynamic rendered uh, content with that. And finally, if None of the above is true, I'll just return the value itself. So, what, what could you do with, uh, with uh, such a component model? Um, extend it, of course, <laughs> with, uh, with, in that case, um, repetition. Or let's say you want to have a list of these components being displayed. And um, in the first line, you see how you actually call it. Um, the super constructor, pretty much the same. Um, like just the, the function name, the call, and this, and then um, 
going to select the class again, a list in that case, actually an array, um, like we learned in both, doesn't matter. And um, then the same construct of same argument for the HTML. Um, but in that case, not extending a native array object, but myself um, builds HTML um, object. Construct is a repetition superclass, the HTML prototype, of course. And that one just modifies the generate behavior in that case. Reuses my iterator I've built earlier from the array and just puts um, everything together and um, just sets up a convention that says um, there's always the property in this object named iterated which contains the actual currently iterated object. So I can re reuse uh, that one when I'm putting something in. So I'll use it. Going up the list. Which is what you know this notation. Yeah, it's just in the mm -hmm. array setup. Mm -hmm. um, and then mm -hmm. just some sort of HTML with that content bit. Then I'm setting the content property to a repetition with a list item and the iterate object. Currently, I put an iterate. Render it in the document body and that's it. So that one displays. So basically a component you've written is this a sophisticated a more sophisticated tokenization. In a way. Yes, and that's that's um, clever. I, this is just some sort of um, an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the way I'm doing it in, in, in current uh, real life applications I'm um, um, <laughs> on work or <laughs> I've built an old framework which does it in a pretty simple, uh, very different way. But um, I just came across uh, that idea of having something very, very short um, to, to build up short applications just if you need. needs not nothing like a real, very big um, framework. So I thought that was um, a good example maybe for a presentation like that. Um, generally, I just like to um, show everybody the idea behind that. You could do it in various different ways, uh, especially for if you're using the DOM directly, you can mm. modify using something like that again or whatever. But the basic concept be behind everything is um, always that you let the repetition in that case, for instance, control each and every line of the repeated object and provide information like that which is reusable, the HTML part of that is reusable and you can just plug them together you don't have any dependency. So if you're developing on a model like that, just for the client side, this has nothing to do with agents of course, so we'll go to that to that moment. Um, you, 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 can, you, you end up with, um, with a <coughs> library of, of very reusable smart um, Classes, just like you're building Java classes as well. Because um, I, I came across the fact that in, in JavaScript applications or JavaScript applications, most people just tend to rewrite everything from scratch and copy paste code heavily, and um, in the end, um, nobody knows where it is when you come, uh, come up and try to do some changes. So, what else, especially? Um, when you're running Ajax applications, um, you can encapsulate the whole communication within in an object model. And what that wants is um, having a base implementation, which provides the, the, um, the basic communication layer stuff, um, like getting information out of um, the XML and getting back from the server. Um, 
and having some method, methods uh, that are overloaded for um, actually creating the, the XML HTTP um, reference um, that, that object, which is created differently in IE. So, um, and there's one browser switch for instantiating that object, and after that, it just works um, on a polymorphic way. You don't have to carry it out, just run through browser switches like that. You set basically the framework up once and then it runs on that point. Same could be done um, with a lot of other browser specific implementations, for example, with uh, event handling things. So you could, um, could wrap up uh, every time you get an event, you could wrap it up in, in, in an object again. Uh, and have one sort of unified um, model of accessing attributes in the events because this is different in, in every browser again, like especially AE and um, W3C and process. So, um, another very interesting bit is, of course, then how do you bring this together with models on the server side? Um, and basically, um, the requirements for that are again loading stuff like yeah, basic component loading. Um, Dojo um, has something like that, package structure, and um, so you need something like where are you registering your components and stuff, um, modeling something like the current window state that you're dealing with. Um, you might need something like creating a component from from a factory or whatever, which could integrate with the, with the first point. And um, yeah, you need a flexible enough generic communication there, which provides you with, with, with possibilities like call that method on that um, object, render this component, put that component in the other one. Or so. Generally, um, I leave that up to you on the, these uh, things. Uh, there's no way of doing that um, in a way that is um, flexible for every need. That's all. This, this bit, especially the communication layer, is very different depending on how your framework is structured, how you're building up your application, what needs you actually have. Uh, some people just send uh, only form information, and some people have heavy interactions between the plant and server sites. So Is um, that clear for what I'm thinking about there? No, I've seen you work. I can't believe that. Um, so I, I, I just came up with some um, best practices I'm, I was collecting over the time, which um, I gotta read the slides myself, but sorry, <laughs> I just finished that yesterday. Um, basically, each component has. Um, Server representation, um, which means that um, you connect it in a, in a way. If you're writing a framework, you say you say look to that class and you get like some sort of reference where you can say new instance and it gives you like a Java object which controls the client side object which you're creating that. Um, so I always try to, to um, keep the same structure I'm having on, this, on, on the client side, on the server side as well. I, I don't really need every data I'm displaying, I don't need the whole DOM tree or whatever is displayed in the browser, but just the basic structure so I can reference every single point and I'm flexible enough if somebody comes up with an idea and we'd like to change something or whatever, um, I can simply um, go through my current structure and reference um, the client component that controls that image, in this case, the image URL. Uh, so basically, um, the server objects yeah, control the state, um, like they replace content components if you like to change a piece in, in, in your layout, or um, especially, it is a good idea if you're um, Having, having a mouse click which should call a method on the server or do something with stuff, triggers some sort of action. If that action is actually done by setting that object 
To, to clients, mm -hmm. and then they can be to multiple clients. Okay. So by keeping the channel. Yeah, basically by using using like an iframe. I think it uses, it's implemented using an iframe and a, and a kind of refresh thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is quite interesting, really, because it, it means you can actually move towards a push model. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and well, there are quite a lot. Of, uh, I just saw that there are some um, some more frameworks currently developing stuff like that. But this push model is very attractive to a lot of people, especially. Because Ajax applications are obviously used for doing a lot of refreshing, so um, the portal model is not always what you want. Um, now, I'll, I'll look at that one for this, something like that. So, I'll just start you from. I'm interested though, as soon as you're doing sort of a one to one mapping on your client side, so In so way. do you have um, like a tool that's doing like co generation for you or something like that? I have, I have it myself. <laughs> Um, it's a free and open source. It is free for developers, but it's not finished yet, I'm, I'm afraid. So I, I, I thought I might be ready for giving you some, some sort of introduction to that one as well today, but um, I'm not. Currently, the website for that one is online. You can download already the development um, a version of that one. And it's in an early development stage and the documentation is in Java. I, I got to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will, I will, it's the next thing I'm doing. <laughs> so um, uh, maybe it's possible that I'm, I'm, I'm posting that one on, on um, the Java user group 
website once I'm done. Um, I would really like to, to um, have some people just playing around with that. Um, it has a way of exactly doing that. So if you have any XML based in that case, you are going to be more just XML and Java rather than JavaScript and stuff. But um, maybe I, I can never work with that one. You mentioned uh, just now that you, you know some frameworks that are designed to um, that have the sort of push model. Um, do you have any names of frameworks? Push models. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, basic, uh, th there's a lot of um, discussion a, going on in that one recently uh, on the Ajax frameworks. I just mm -hmm. saw yesterday they um, they posted a, a, another recommendation. That I, I I can't really remember which uh, the name of the framework. But I can have a look at the JXT. Um, but I, I, I have a, a lot of uh, um, things on my website. There's one called. Who? Um, I, I gotta look that up. Maybe I can just post a, a list of links because most of the stuff I'm, I'm referencing to is. Unfortunately, in German as well, so <laughs> I was going to try to find something that, um, that's in the initial. But so it's the same, same information. Can I pick up the topic? Uh, oh, that's actually what, what these frameworks try to do. Yeah. Um, you don't have a real one to one connection, it's, it's still HTTP. So uh, you're based yeah. on, on the orders of HTTP. So you can only just Call and these push models basically work right in the call and service and response. It just sends one character like here and here, doesn't finish the response. So the channel keeps stays open. Okay. And before the time it occurs, it sends an empty one. Uh, actually, there are different approaches to that one, but it sends just an empty response and then um, the client just asks again. So you always have a channel open, the so you just can push to the channel. Oh, okay. In a way. <coughs> but people just need so. I think Jetty is being extended to uh, continuations to support that. Because obviously the, the large channel, the large number of channels can can um, hit the limit on connection yeah, to the cyber And uh, I, it's just news. A lot of people try and a lot of people do, I don't. I just tend to follow. Um, if it's a second, for a second, I found a chat line I want to square it, it sometimes it's every 250 milliseconds, it's fine. Because if not, nobody wrote anything, it's just responding an empty response, nothing in there. So no for the server, nothing to do very fast. Um, when I, I tried um, getting that on the server to um, produce some looks, but we didn't make the 10 people in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> so one percent, maybe one and a half, whatever. No. So, um, there's not uh, for performance reason, there's, you don't have to. It's just really nice programming model for the stuff. These push models, you're talking about the comment. Uh, methodology or what I've seen on a, a Jaxian, which is a different model. Oh, this is the one I'm, I'm also just, yeah. Okay. It's, um, they, they came up with that first thing. Mm -hmm. The first one where I came from. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far the framework is asking. What is it called Comment. Comment. The acronym I can't remember. Sort of like Ajax, but con continuous object, something, something, something. something. <laughs> <laughs> Tend to 
build some sort of help into this um, package or whatever, maybe XP, um, something like um, yeah, stuff that generates code, <laughs> so you don't have to write all the this stuff. But um, I think if you're developing a carefully designed um, JavaScript library for your application, so spending some, some time on, on just scripting properly, um, you don't have to type that much anymore. It's, um, basically, the trouble starts if you're trying to do everything by hand, and then what most of what is trying. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Yeah. yeah. Who else? Yeah, I mean, yeah. um, it's just they have to translate the map and uh, all that kind of stuff, all these um, um, utility methods you need, um, and send them off to the client so you get a lot of kilobytes of script that you actually don't want when you read them because uh, everything is built into the JavaScript already you need for um, Are they actually doing translation? Are you sure they're doing that? You sure they're doing that rather than mapping? They're using native objects. So that's what they were doing. Yeah, basically they do, but they have to grab it to suit the API. So um, I, I, I would have a look at that one. I think it's, it's an intelligent way of doing it, yes. But I don't know if they're really doing some sort of component uh, oriented. So I think so. I can't see it. In, I think for GWT, it looks like the programming model is much more like Swing. Yes. Um, you know, you, you kind of lay out things, add buttons, and you know, like much more like uh, like classic Swing stuff than than, mm -hmm. than, than more than web design. What I personally I like it to be in control before it's generated. So um, these kinds of frameworks are great. It's generally uh, you have very few work with that you don't have to code JavaScript at all most of the time, which is almost even it's great. Um, but if it comes down to stuff like you like to do some innovation in the past, or have some serious spark in one special browser and you can't control of how it's done, um, it could be annoying. It depends on what you need. If, if there's a framework that suits your needs, um, it's just fine. Well, they used to say nobody, nobody got fired from IBM if you use their stuff. Perhaps that's true enough, Google. <laughs> so, I don't know. So, you can see each other typing here. And, um, talk to yourself. And that one's done with my phone. I always wonder do um, people who are doing a lot of Ajax, do they have not consider action scripts and flash at all? So it looks like most of the stuff that um, people are trying to do with Ajax are stuff that people in the Flash and Action Script community have been doing for ages. True. Um, so, in your experience, have you ever considered doing Flash Action Script with stuff you're doing with Ajax? And if not, why? Uh, not for myself, because uh, currently I'm paid good money for doing Ajax. <laughs> 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 That's one of these things. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, in a way you're right, but uh, what the agent's community answers to that um, is uh, you need a plugin for doing action scripts. You rely on uh, nothing open, you rely on um, still on the Adobe case. So, a lot of people don't know about Hello? I mean, in that case, you're relying on JavaScript. Yeah. 
enabled on the route of people might have jobs disabled, but flash installed or whatever. So uh, you do that with yeah, a number of different technologies, but it's, it's kind of possible to get So your plugin then has almost like, what, 90% penetration, 92%? That's not a plugin anymore. That's, um, that's your platform. So. Yeah, true. What you could do in, with, when you're dealing with HTML pages so like this is to get all these resizing stuff for free. You can change the size of the, uh, um, uh, which you couldn't do with uh, Flash. Um, and you could, you could, yeah, maybe you could just if you build it in, but you have to build it to get it for free here. I don't know if this would work, maybe it's not. Um, or stuff like searching the page for, for content. I suppose a question to ask, will um, macro, no, Adobe ever open source the action script? Because it seems like you've got a collision between two worlds. If it wants more penetration in it, you know, maybe some of that technology should go into Rhino or Mozilla and then people might be able to find a, a, a more powerful use for it. Uh, if, it, if developers are not going to Adobe, maybe Do go the other way. Huh? <laughs> well, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different application, of course. Uh, it's bigger. Um, In between, they showed up a number of um, um, frameworks uh, or just HX based uh, email applications. Uh, that one's quite old, <laughs> so I, I'm not sure if I'm going to develop further, but um, okay, we can we start with it. Like, this is based on, on, on something like a widget toolkit again, based on which itself is uh, based on components. So Reusable AJAX components like a dialog and input fields. And if, uh, in, in that case, um, you don't have to care about the layout, you just say the dialog is, is in that size and it just stretches all the controls to fit that dialog. Um, you could do that just by, by in various ways. You can just build the proper CSS files, well, um, depends on, on what you're doing, but if you're even with a huge application, it might be a good idea of having something like this. Um, yeah, this, this is uh, one of the main applications I was testing around the um, um, What else can I show? Uh, I think most of the stuff is not really online. I got some small um, stuff on, oops, uh, on my journal web page, uh, which shows something in my in web page. Um,
Anyone got any more questions? Maybe we can go for a beer. <laughs> Is that? Sure. One, two. Okay, it's a beer.